What is it about David Lynch movies that makes them so special? Is it the surrealistic dreamlike atmosphere? The shocking imagery? The sex? The red curtains? Whatever it is, I think we can all agree that as great as his movies are, there simply aren't enough of them. So what do you do when you've watched everything from Eraserhead to The Return three times over? Well, you could sit on your hands and wait for Wisteria, or you can scratch the Lynch itch with some very Lynchian literature. Personally, I prefer to do the latter. That's why I present to you, in no particular order, five books that you might enjoy if you're a fan of David Lynch. Number one, City of Glass. This one's just too obvious not to go first. Forty years after it first came out, Paul Auster's City of Glass is still something of a standard bearer for modern neo-noir fiction, at least of the experimental kind. It starts with Daniel Quinn, a mystery writer, who takes on the job of a real detective when he answers a call meant for somebody else. The gig has him following a madman through the streets of New York, a man who we have reason to suspect is trying to kill his own son. Slowly, Quinn begins to lose himself inside the mystery of the man who he's supposed to be shadowing. Identities shift, and as readers, we're never quite sure what to make of what we're seeing. At times dark, but equally playful, this is a book that stands the test of time. If you've enjoyed the puzzle that was Mulhan Drive, especially the way Lynch plays with the conventions of mystery and noir, City of Glass may be for you. Oh, and if you'd prefer to read it as a graphic novel, it's been adapted into one of those, too. Number two, Last Days. Okay, let me get into the meaty stuff. I think we can all agree that some of David Lynch's work is simply not for the faint of heart. That goes doubly for Brian Evenson's book, Last Days. Again, we start with a detective, retired Detective Klein, who's recruited against his will into a cult known as the Brotherhood of Mutilation. The cult, which practices self-amputation for religious reasons, is convinced that Klein, himself an amputee, is the only man they can trust to solve a murder mystery within their own ranks. Klein would rather stay retired, but the Brotherhood isn't taking no for an answer. Drawn into their disturbing world, Klein crosses the line when he lays eyes upon their prophet, a man who, well... Let's just say he takes their gospel of self-mutilation to the extreme. Klein tries to escape, but those who've been called to serve God don't get away so easily. If you're a fan of the absurdist tendency in Lynch's work, and if you can stomach some of the more violent aspects of it, you must check out Last Days. Number three... Secret Rendezvous. All right, this happens to be my favorite book on the list. In fact, this is in my top ten books of all time. Japanese author Kobo Abe made a name for himself with this Kafka-esque fiction. His books tend to follow main characters who, trying to solve a mystery, become ensnared in the web of their surreal surroundings. In Secret Rendezvous, those surroundings are a sprawling hospital complex where strange sexual experiments are underway. Our main character is a man whose wife was forcefully taken there one morning by an ambulance nobody called for. As he searches for her, our nameless protagonist is recruited by the hospital's security chief, an unusual man who believes himself to be a horse. The story then unfolds in the form of notes as he descends the labyrinthine bowels of the complex, meeting bizarre, inhuman characters, doing bizarre, inhuman things. 
If you're a fan of dark sexual dynamics, such as those that drive the narrative in Lost Highway, Secret Rendezvous may be for you. Number four, Recollections of the Golden Triangle by Alain Rob Grier might be the most hypnotic book ever written. As a writer, Rob Grier was known for inventing a style that brought detailed descriptions of time and space to the fore at the expense of character and story. There is a story here, however. It has to do with the murderous activities of a cult operating in a sunny resort town and the investigation that unearths their secrets. This book is not linear in any sense, and readers will often find themselves mired in one beautiful and exhaustively rendered sequence of images after another. Are we in a prison one moment? Are we Nae McGree painting the next? This book is full of secret doors that lead only to more questions. A warning, though. Its words may be enchanting, but its revelations are indeed cruel. Of all the books on this list, this is the one that most closely captures the dreamlike visual atmosphere of a Lynch movie. Perhaps that's not surprising, since the author was himself a filmmaker, one who, like Lynch, delighted in throwing beautiful women into dangerous situations. Now, I have one more book to recommend to you. But before we get to that, I'd like to remind you that on this channel, I also publish my own original horror stories. So if you're the type of person who likes creepy pastas and horror narrations, I invite you to check out my scary story playlist. There should be a link to it right above my head. If you'd like to help me make more videos like this one, the way to do that is to pick up one of my audiobooks, which you can do at hugodark.bandcamp.com or by becoming a Patreon. Patrons get access to all my audiobooks and exclusive stories. Links are in the description. One thing I've always wondered about is what Lynch was thinking when he imagined those creepy homeless guys that show up in so many of his works. I could probably do a whole video about that, but right now let's just say that if you're as intrigued with the possibilities of homelessness in horror as I am, you may want to check out The Caveman's Valentine. It's about Romulus Ledbetter, a homeless man who lives in Manhattan's Inwood Park. One day he finds a dead body at the mouth of his cave. The police insist that the man froze to death. But Romulus knows the murder was part of an evil conspiracy. The mystery that drives the caveman's valentine isn't really about the murder, however. It's Romulus himself. Is he crazy? Or does this mad genius actually understand the secret workings of the world better than we do? If you've seen The Return, you can't help but be intrigued by the connections Lynch draws between his mendicants and the inner workings of the universe. Romulus might not be one of Lynch's woodmen, but I still feel there's a relationship there. And of course, this book was also adapted into a decent movie starring Samuel L. Jackson. So there's also that. And there you have it. Five books to enjoy if you're a David Lynch fan. Now we just have to sit back and hope that somebody picks up Wisteria. I mean, come on, Netflix. Pulling the plug on a Lynch project and a Cronenberg project at the same time. Who do you think you are?